So, Matt, we just went through a big election that seemingly will never end. Uh, what's your takeaway? Well, I, I'm hoping for divided government, and, and I, I don't know what's going to happen in Georgia, but, uh, you know, as a libertarian, it would be skeptical of the fiscal responsibility of either party, mm-hmm. and they've, they've sort of earned that skepticism. Divided government seems to work better, and I, you know, I, I worked on the Hill in, in the 1990s during the Republican Revolution, and, and uh, you know, thank goodness the Republicans took over because, you know, the Bill Clinton that was passing Hillary Care and mm-hmm. stimulus became... The era of big gov- government is over. Mm-hmm. He didn't mean it. No, but he, he didn't he say was, it, though. He was forced yeah. by, by that competition that he did that. So I'm hoping for that because it's going to be a disaster if, if one party driven by a very radical agenda gets in power. Um, but the thing that I noticed that I, I don't, I'm not seeing a lot of people talk about is the huge swing and historic turnout of young people against the Republican Party. Hmm. Now, is that just a vote against Donald Trump or is it a trend where where the AOCs of the world are really um, seducing young people with these ideas of democratic socialism and and all of the stuff she talks about? I, I think we need to pay more attention to that. And I'm not sure that that conservative media or Republican Party politics is in any way capable of kind of fixing that problem. So, so we've obsessed a lot about, about how to communicate the ideas of liberty to young people, because if that trend sustains, um, we got a problem. And, but it's got to be upstream of politics. I, I don't think showing up for an election is a great place to talk about values and ideas. No. Um, that's an understatement of the century. But uh, <laughs> No, it's true. It doesn't seem, I, I, and I, I do worry about that, I, I'll, I'll say. You know, I I've noticed, I think, a change in the in this business uh, that we're in at the Blaze over the past, I don't know, five to ten years. Yeah. Where really it's gone away from ideas and more towards personalities and politics and battles and culture wars and all of that stuff. And I, and some of that's valuable. Like it's important to that's part of the way you go through ideas sometimes. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, it doesn't seem anchored in the same sort of principles that it was. A few years ago. And, yeah. and, and when I talk about those things, a lot of times, you know, friends of mine who are more sort of on the populist side, more friendly to nationalism than I am, uh, will tell me, well, you're just in the past and you need to update your thinking because we're in this war and we got to do all these things. And I'm not saying there's no place for that, but I think there has to also be place for the, 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 the foundational ideas that support it. Yeah, everybody, um, almost everybody that showed up in this election showed up to vote against somebody. Yeah. And and I'm as you know, I'm an old Tea Party guy. And and there was a time when a broad based grassroots movement was very much driven by values and and principles that, you know, the the, the government should only do certain things. It should be limited by the Constitution. That wasn't that long ago. I realize I realize my my beard's a lot grayer than it (laughs) used to be. And so I I think I think it's got to be done upstream. And so we you know, we, we tell a lot of stories. And, and the thing about my show that, that's different than, than something you'd see on Fox News is I really, I try to get progressives to come on. I try to get, I have libertarians and conservatives, um, but there's no shouting and you're not, not allowed to say something. Right. And, and you know, the, the trend that I see with, with podcasts and binge watching on Netflix is that young people very much are open to honest conversations as long as they don't feel like they're being manipulated. Yeah, I think that the podcast trend is, is positive, right? I mean, you're talking about long-form conversations. You can go more in-depth on, on a particular topic. I mean, I know from doing cable news for many years and then coming here and, and able to kind of sit back in this format, you're able to get through a, a lot more. And you really are able to investigate these ideas. Yeah, and I, I think there was this mythology that young people had short attention spans. And it yeah. turns out that Facebook <laughs> imposed short attention spans on all of us. And mm-hmm. we're all guilty of this now. And the, you know, the feed doesn't allow you to sort of dig into something. So they've migrated to streaming services. Well, they'll, you know, they'll go watch Joe Rogan for three hours. Yeah, three hours. Like, nobody saw that coming. Yeah. But I think there's an intellectual honesty to just conversations with people, even if you disagree with them, you know, can we still sort of hash that stuff out? And I think if there's an honest argument, um, our ideas actually fare pretty well. Like mm-hmm. we, we, we do have some, some strong arguments and some, some good data to back them up. Um, but if it's a shout fest, I don't know. If, if, I'm, if I'm 18 and I'm choosing between Donald Trump and AOC, 
Who am I going to choose? Though nobody wins in that. I, I feel like in a lot of ways. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, again, like Trump did some things I really liked. Um, AOC has never done a thing that I really like, but except sell a sixty-five dollar sweatshirt. I kind of like her for that. Yeah. But I mean, it's 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 and one that of dirty capitalism. Yeah, I know. Behind it all, capitalism always wins. Hi, Stu Bergier of Stu Does America here. Thanks so much for watching our video. Did you know you could watch our entire catalog for free right here on our channel? Subscribe now and be sure to hit the thumbs up button on all the episodes you watch because that's how they know you like this stupid show. And that little bell in the corner as well. Make sure you click that. You'll get notifications every time we post new content. Stu Does America every weekday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here.